Okay, so you live in the state of California and you're like, oh, I want an AR-15, but should I go fix mag? Should I go featureless? Um, should I do an Ash for BRS? Should I do one of the not AR, AR type guns? Well, today we're gonna cover what goes into ARs in the state of California and show you what I think about each of them. But let's get into the shooting. Nice. So, standard, fully featured uh, setup, pistol grip, detachable mags, normal capacity magazine with the Ashford BRS. A little bit different of a setup. Okay, this gun's getting a little smoky. Probably can't tell because I am using a disposable lens camera to record this intro. Okay, so if you live in the state of California and you want an AR-15, you have a few different options. And today I'm gonna kind of cover which one might be right for you. I'll give the brief pros and cons of each, and I'll give a general recommendation based on what your use case might be. So to start off, the one that I would probably recommend to most people most of the time would be something like this. This is a featureless rifle. This gun does not have any of the scary features. The stock is fixed. It doesn't have a pistol grip. There's a variety of different non-pistol grips on the market. No forward pistol grip, no flash hider because that would be far too dangerous. Just completely ignore the fact that this gun shoots like a laser beam with aimbot installed. But this is a featureless rifle. I can use my standard capacity 30 round mags, and I could put that in here legally. All of these guns are chambered in 5.56. You can shoot 223 out of them. I'm not gonna be talking about rim fire firearms. I'm gonna be talking more about AR-15 type firearms that are chambered in 5.56, 223, 300 blackout, all that kind of stuff. So featureless is probably gonna be my personal favorite or the one I would recommend to most people. If you want it for defensive use, competition shooting, if you want to use it for hunting, it's a pretty good option because depending on what you're hunting, you are not limited by capacity. If you own your legally acquired Freedom Week magazines, you can use them. If you want to know how I have them, I have a whole video on that. I'll try to pin it here or here or something like that. Now, the next most common option that you're gonna see people choose is fixed magazine. And now this gun is an AR-15 pistol with a little folding Strike Industries brace. The reason I chose a pistol to illustrate the fixed magazine setup is because for AR-15 pistols in the state of California, fixed magazine is the only option that you have. And now there's two main styles of going with a fixed magazine. The uh, good for at the range to sight it in and then leaving California is the comp mag. This is a side loading magazine that once you insert it into the gun, you pull down on this little tab and then that allows you, you can lock it in place and that allows you to feed rounds in through the side, close it up. Now you have 10 rounds in the gun in order to load it up again, same thing, but it comes out really easy. You open the action open, pop a pin in there, magazine comes out. That's good for 
compliance in the streets and assault weapon in the sheets type activities um, if you're into that sort of thing. Now, this is gonna be more reminiscent of what you would actually see on a fixed magazine setup here. Well, this one's actually a little bit unique, but the fixed magazine setups that you see, the way they work is there is a button typically on the right hand thumb side that you can press. And when you press it, the action opens up. At that point, you can drop the magazine. When the action is closed, the magazine does not drop. So I cannot drop the magazine. I pop the action open. Now I can drop the magazine. Unfortunately, with fixed magazine AR-15s, you are actually limited to 10 rounds. I can own this standard capacity magazine, but if I were to put it in this mag well, uh, do not pass go, do not collect $200. The DOJ would kill my dog and possibly um, give me a prostate exam at the young age of 30. Anyways, if you're gonna get a fixed magazine and you wanna use one of the ones with the quick takedown pin, the one that you should get is by far, absolutely, the AR Maglock Kingpin. The AR Maglock Kingpin is superior to the Juggernaut Tactical rear takedown pin by a mile. It's not even close. Anyone that says they like their Juggernaut Tactical has simply not used an AR Maglock. I know that's a very hard opinion, but it's just, it's better in every way. The Juggernaut Tactical, this rear side can unscrew and fall off. I've had that happen before. The, now this gun is still equipped with a kingpin. This one here, the kingpin, you can take it out with no tools by just pressing. Boom, now I can take the gun apart. Now I wanna put it back together. And I just come over here. I'm doing this all off camera basically, but you get the point. You saw how quick that was to take apart. The kingpin, on the other hand, don't even, I, I'm not doing it because it's so easy to mess up and the fact that you could just lose one side of it and now it's completely inoperable, do not do it. If you want a fixed magazine, AR Maglock kingpin rear pin, and then for the fixed magazine setup, you either go with the AR Maglock Gen 4 or if you're willing to drill a hole in your lower, go with the Hogue Freedom Fighter. It's the best, but you have to drill into your lower. Some AR-15 pistol lowers on the market come with it pre-drilled. Some AR-15 rifles that are fixed mag come with it pre-drilled and it's already set up like that, so that's great. But get the AR Maglock Kingpin. Last thing I wanna say. So the next option that I wanna talk about is actually the sponsor of today's video. They have sponsored me in the past. Um, I did a full video on this type of setup very recently. This is the Ashford BRS. What it is, is a mechanism that makes the gun non-semi-auto. So when I press the paddle, the bolt drops. When the gun fires, it locks it open to the rear. I then drop it again. Now, I'm not the fastest with this, but the owner, Trenton, who's um, actually a very nice guy, um, who I've seen this product get developed over the last like four years at this point, he's actually crazy fast with it. He posted a video on Instagram of him getting like 0.16 and 0.18 splits. Now this Ashford BRS system, what it allows you to do is since the gun is not semi-auto, it's exempt from pretty much all of the assault weapon laws. NFA laws still apply, a lot of other laws still apply, but when it comes to assault weapon stuff, so adjustable stock, pistol grip. I could put a forward vertical grip on this or a forward pistol grip. I do have a flash hider on it. I could put a flare launcher on it, but um, this gun is already heavy as it is. This is my Modern Warfare 2 M4 clone. Um, and I just wanted this gun to look normal and I wanted to be able to put my normal magazines in it. So since this gun is not semi-automatic, I could put my standard capacity magazines that I legally own in this gun. So that's a big selling point of them. Who would I recommend this for? Well, personally, when it comes to self-defense, personal protection, I'm always gonna recommend featureless for just generally 90%, 99% of the population um, because I think that's probably just the most comfortable way to shoot. This I think is actually great. I would choose this over something like the Cali Key um, for sure. I'm not a big Cali Key fan, 
But what this allows you to do is shoot your gun, have it look normal. If you just want to go to the range and shoot fairly quickly, um, it takes a little bit of skill and this is like the worst possible setup for this. This Ashford BRS really excels on AR pistols that are smaller and lighter. This gun is just generally um, a lot heavier of a gun and it's got big thick boy girthy everything on it because of this arms rail. Anyways, I would recommend this for the kind of person that just wants to go to the range. You want your gun to look normal. Maybe if you're like trying to do like as clone correct as possible, this might be an option for you. Um, but really, uh, this is more of a fun kind of setup than a self-defense type setup, in my opinion. But I do really like it. And I know that some people have said that they've set their guns up with that. So if that's what you're into, if you're willing to practice with it, you can get crazy fast with these. And if you did it on an AR-15 pistol, you could then use your 30 round, 29 round, 60 round magazines if I were to install the Ashford BRS, which I honestly might swap it over from this rifle to this pistol because this would then make this gun a lot, or it would make this gun capable of using my Freedom Week magazines and the BRS system would actually be able to shine. Those are the main three types of AR-15s. Now. We get into the non-AR-15, AR-15 type of firearm, like the SIG MCX-R, which again, I have done an entire video on. This gun is not an AR-15. It doesn't use a whole lot of AR-15 parts, but when people want semi-auto centerfire rifles that take AR, magazine, AR magazines, this kind of fits that same niche. So. This gun is technically considered featureless, but it's not necessarily what would have been part of the original ban that uh, PC-30515 was a part of. So this gun, semi-auto, centerfire, regular detachable magazines of standard capacity, if you legally own them, and it's pretty neat. I did a whole review on this gun. It's very accurate, especially for a combat-oriented upper. It uses SIG MCX upper receivers. There's also the Foxtrot mic, which I'm not a huge fan of since I've had a chance to shoot this and then have a chance to get my hands on this new exciting offering that hasn't come to the market yet. I think it's gonna be, um, I think that new one is gonna probably take a lot of market share to be honest. But I do actually really like the SIG MCXR. I like the idea of the Foxtrot mic. It just kind of like put a weird taste in my mouth when the owner tried to uh, uh, defame me on the internet, um, or he did defame me. It wasn't an attempt, he did. But uh, ultimately uh, I was successful in that. But this is a type of firearm that would be perfectly suitable for defensive use, perfectly suitable for hunting. You can get it in 7.62 by 39 or 300 blackout as well as the standard 5.56. So you got a wide range of calibers, so you could hunt variety of game, you know, probably nothing bigger than like a pig or a uh, deer in the state of California because our deer are not like other deer. Um, good for coyote. This would honestly be a good ranch rifle, which is kind of what they're marketing it as. But beyond that, it's a semi-auto. It's center fire. It takes standard capacity AR magazines. It has a built-in ARCA rail. These types of firearms are very handy and they're very comfortable for people to shoot, especially if you're used to this form factor. So I would kind of put featureless at the top. Then I would put this type of firearm. Then unironically, I would use the Ashford BRS system and then I would go with fixed magazine if I had to choose them for purely uh, like personal protection type uses. But that's because fixed magazine, I don't even bring into the picture, into my thought, into my brain when it comes to personal protection, because why would I do that when I have a featureless rifle that I could shoot 30 rounds? Now you say, yeah, the reload process is pretty quick on these. Like you can get pretty dang quick. You know, so empty mag, empty gun, fixed magazine. So I'm here, reload. Like that's pretty quick, right? But in order to fire 30 rounds, I have to reload this gun twice. This gun never gets reloaded. So personally, that's where I put that. I can actually shoot 30 rounds out of this faster 
then I can shoot 30 rounds out of a semi-auto fixed mag gun. So I wouldn't really recommend either of these two setups for personal protection, unless you have looked at your own situation. You've looked at your own skill set. You've looked at maybe you don't have access to 30 round magazines. You looked at your situation and you determined that it was right for you. That's great. I'm not telling you you're wrong. I'm just saying what I would recommend to most people. If you can come to the conclusion that either of these two setups are good or better for you than a featureless gun, it means you have enough information and knowledge to make the right choices for yourself most likely, okay? So I'm not saying you're wrong, this is my recommendation. I would go with featureless or this for hunting, personal protection, that kind of thing. If you want a range gun, I unironically think that the BRS system is better than fixed magazine, but they're a little pricey, but everything in the state of California is pricey. It's part of living here. You live here, you understand it. Anyways, let me know what you think. Do you prefer featureless? Do you prefer fixed magazine? Why do you prefer the non-semi-autos? If you do, why do you prefer fixed magazine or one of these non-AR type guns? I really just wanna kinda of get an idea of what you guys are thinking because that's gonna dictate what kind of content when it comes to ARs that I produce in the future because I wanna stay relevant to what is interesting to all of you. Personally, I think featureless is just the clear choice for most people. It's just pretty nice. I mean, obviously the way these guns are set up is very different across the board. It's really not fair to compare any firearm to this gun that has no recoil um, because it's just, it shoots better than anything else that I own. However, there are some major limitations to that. When it comes to featureless guns, since you cannot use a flash hider and you're likely going to be using a muzzle brake, it makes them loud when it comes to using inside the home. Guns are loud in general, but a muzzle brake like this is just completely suboptimal when it comes to personal protection, home defense kind of scenarios. That being said, if I had to pick this gun up and defend myself with it, I would absolutely hate to be the other guy on the other end because I will zip you up. These other firearms are very good for what they're intended for. I think it's just uh, worth thinking about what you should pick because a lot of people might be getting into ARs and they're thinking, oh, like I've had a fixed magazine because that's what I bought at the gun store on the rack. Well, is that actually right for me? Should I go to featureless? Should I go to fixed mag? Should I go to a non-semi-auto? Should I go to one of these alternative ranch rifle type firearms? And really that's kind of just a, a little bit of information. Let me know what you guys think down below. You guys know the drill. Have fun. Be safe. Stay dangerous. Peace.